Hi, I'm Jeremy Veldman. Welcome to another episode of Telescope Tips. Now today I'm going to talk about my primary telescope, which is a 20-inch Dobsonian reflector. A reflector uses mirrors instead of lenses to gather light. Refractors use lenses and refractor, reflectors use mirrors. And this is a Newtonian design named after Isaac Newton, who first pioneered this concept of a large primary mirror at the bottom that gathers the light, focuses it to a secondary mirror, and then it comes out the side where your eyepiece is. And it's on a Dobsonian mount, a very, very simple mount, which means I can move it back and forth and up and down. So now, 20 inches, that is the size of the primary mirror. I'm often asked, how powerful is this telescope? What's the magnification? That's not necessarily the right question to ask. In fact, oftentimes it's not the right question. It's not how, what the magnification of a telescope is, it's the collecting area. That's where you evaluate the true quality of a telescope. And bigger really is better in the world of astronomy because the bigger the collecting area, whether it's the lens, the primary lens, if it's a refractor design, or the primary mirror, if it's a reflector design, that tells you how much surface area you have to gather photons. Imagine being in an arid desert and you've got to gather as much water as you can if and when you get rain, which is very rare. You get a little bit of rain, you're not going to get very far if you hold a teacup up as opposed to a teacup with a huge tent spread out to gather more of that rain and focus it down. That's the same concept behind a telescope. The larger the collecting area, the better the quality in terms of the light gathering power of the telescope and what you can do with it. And really, it's not just the collecting area, but also the optics, which are the eyepieces that you get. We'll talk about eyepieces in a future episode. That's a whole nother issue in and of itself. But I, uh, I went with this design here as far as my primary telescope because my goal is to do more deep sky observing. I want to go after galaxies, globular clusters, things that are in the Messier catalog and the NGC catalog. So in order to do that, I need a lot of light gathering power and I need a bigger telescope like this in order to do so. So now, bigger isn't necessarily better in terms of ease of storage and transport. Again, I live in an urban area, most of you do. Light pollution is an issue and that can affect the quality of the skies when you're, when you're doing some observing. So I need to transport this telescope every time I go to do some serious observing. And there are a lot of people who quite frankly don't want to do that with a telescope this size because it's a lot of labor. Now, in this particular case, it's on a truss mount, which means it's built using aluminum poles. I've got eight poles that collect the uh, primary mirror box to the secondary mirror up here. So I literally have to break it down and build it back up every time. And I've got a set procedure for doing this. So it's something I've just gotten used to and something that I've made the decision that I'm signing up for every time I do observing. So there's a little bit of work involved, but for me it's worth it because the payoff is incredible if you can get to a dark sky location on a clear night and spend several hours out there looking at the sky. So let's talk a little bit about this telescope. Um, now, it's set up now. The nice thing is if I'm at home, I can easily store this telescope in my garage and bring it out whenever I wanna do some observing. So, and interestingly enough, it's on wheels and when I have the bolts in here, I can very easily just move it. In fact, I'm doing it right now with one hand. I can move it around to where I need it to go, set it down, and then if I want to focus on an object, I can do that very easily also. You can see it's very, very easy for me to actually maneuver this thing. So once it's set up, I'm good to go, whether I'm at home or whether I'm at an observing site, and I can move it around fairly easily. So that's the other side of this particular telescope. Yeah, it's a little bit of work to get it set up, it's a little bit of work to store it and transport it, but once I'm set, I'm good to go. And so let's talk a little bit about what the telescope actually consists of. I don't know if you can see inside here, but if I look down the tube of this telescope, I can actually see the primary mirror, which is where all the light is gathered. I can actually see my image in this primary mirror right now. And that's where all the light comes in when I'm focusing on an object. 
It comes through here and then it focuses it to the secondary mirror right here. I've got it covered. And then the light there gets focused right here to the eyepiece, which is where the observing takes place, which is where I actually see the objects. Um, and then here is my viewfinder, and then here is my Telrad. So now the Telrad is just a kind of a laser target. It's actually a literal target that you would see. So it has a clear, um, a clear field. So all I need to do is, is make sure that my Telrad and my viewfinder and my eyepiece are aligned, and I do this every night before I observe. And once that happens, it's fairly easy for me to find objects if I know where to look. So I use my Telrad first to get the object in the field of view. I just look straight through to it. And then I use my viewfinder here to kind of hone in on it. Now, if I'm going after something like a globular cluster, M3 is an example. It's in the, it's in the constellation Canis Venetici. Globulars are great in this telescope because they just burst. A globular cluster is um, a spherical cluster of stars, very, very old stars, or as old as the galaxy itself. So, but they look great in this particular telescope. So I use the Telrad to kind of, you know, hone in or, or uh, uh, basically do a, a, the, my best guess of where that object is located. Then I look through my viewfinder here to look for a little fuzzy patch. And I've trained myself over time to know what to look for when I'm looking for a globular. It doesn't look like a star. It's a little fuzzy patch that's slightly different. And then I, I, uh, I focus it here in my viewfinder, and then I look through my eyepiece, and if I've set my optics up correctly, then it should be very easy to find, and it just bursts to life. So I've had this telescope for a few years now. You can see when it's fully built, it's actually taller than me. Um, there are 110 deep sky objects in the Messier catalog. I've seen them all with this telescope. I'm doing several of the NGC um, objects now too, including uh, faint galaxies. Getting more and more of a challenge these days because it's getting harder and harder to find dark skies. Light pollution is certainly an issue, not only in urban areas like where I live, but even in dark sky locations like where we observe. But um, this telescope has served me well. It's not for everybody. You have to decide for yourself what's the best fit in terms of your observing needs. It really comes down to ease of storage, ease of transport to a dark sky location, and then also frequency of use. And if you can get a scope, regardless of its size, that checks all three of those boxes, then that's a good scope for you. And I've gotten a lot of use out of this one. But I will tell you that a lot of my colleagues don't prefer this particular telescope because it's too big and it's too cumbersome in terms of storage and transport, and it's just not worth the hassle. So I like it because it's 20 inches and has a huge collecting area, and I can do a lot more with those extra photons. But there are a lot of people who prefer something half the size or even a good set of binoculars as their primary observing tool. So what type of telescope is best for you? Ultimately, that's a decision that you have to decide for yourself based on your needs and based on your goals. Because the bottom line is, it doesn't do you any good to get excited about a telescope like this, use it a couple times, and then find out that it's just not for you, and then it ends up in e either the attic or in the garage somewhere and it doesn't get used. The best type of telescope is the one that gets used. So again, I'm Jeremy Veldman, Memphis Astronomical Society. This is my 20-inch Dobsonian, my primary telescope. Hope you found this video useful. I want to remind you again that the Memphis Astronomical Society meets once a month, first Friday of the month, at 8 o'clock p.m. at Christian Brothers University at Sessie Hall, room 155. We also conduct two dark sky observing sessions, if the weather is clear, at a dark sky location in northwest Mississippi. If you're interested in learning more about our group and how you can get involved, visit our website, memphisastro.org, and find us on Facebook and YouTube also. For the Memphis Astronomical Society, I'm Jeremy Veldman, Stay tuned for our next episode of Telescope Tips.